cross uh, transplant boundaries. Yeah. You see, yeah. that, that may be an avenue through which we can we can bring the best of faith and the yeah. best of uh, the, the religious teachings of all different. Yeah. Yeah. You see that the humanness of the human being is, is, is more important than anything else. And in that context, we've got to deal with the way we live, our lifestyles, yeah. so that yeah. global climate, climate change, and we can make a difference in that area. Absolutely, you know, Haridas, which is why we made, made that the theme of our Internet, Inter Civilization Youth Engagement Program this year. We're looking at the whole question of uh, climate change, huh? the environmental challenge, because we know it is that one issue that links with almost everything else, you know, especially as you put it, lifestyle. There's no way you can bring about a, a more balanced relationship with the environment without changing one's lifestyle. And that is the one area that the American elites are most resistant to. The idea of changing lifestyles. So having five cars you know, in your garage, you know, a certain lifestyle, this is what they don't want to change. Not just American elites, a lot of Malaysian elites too, don't want to change that. And elites everywhere. So it, in a sense, pits people against uh, dominant elites. This, this whole question of the environment. Uh, with the show up, this idea of globalization creates an idea that we are all in one boat which one action will affect the another, like it or not. Whether the Americans, what they do will affect someone else, and whether what someone else does will affect the Americans. In the war that you've been discussing, there's no empathy. They only discuss about American casualties. Mm -hmm. And what they have done to Iraq is what Amer Iraq has done to them, the cost they're there. But they don't seem to transcend the argument. If they had gone to the globalization, um, global warming argument, what they have uh, done to Iraq will also affect them and also the Iraqis. Can we somehow change the language a little bit? If we were to argue, we are all in the same boat, rather than you know, how does it affect us individually, American interests and such. No, I agree. That should be the approach. <coughs> that we are all in the same boat. The climate crisis highlights that. But I think we also have to tell them that the nuclear weapons crisis also yes. shows us that we are in the same boat. We can't run away from this. Yeah, it's not just the countries that possess weapons or your victims will be affected, a lot of others will be affected if there's a nuclear war. We have to uh, get across the same message when it comes to, say, some of the destructive effects of uh, cultural globalization, the impact upon the family, the growth of exaggerated individualism. It's impacting upon uh, people everywhere. The way in which we have uh, inverted uh, our values as a result of this type of um, global crisis uh, where people who are poor, who need things, you know, they are set aside and we give priority to people who have uh, a lot, you know, as against those who have a little. We have to, I think, emphasize things of that sort. Yes. How about America's one-sided policy in Middle East? Yeah. Up to now, uh, Americans are indifferent because for a while, as long yeah. as Muslims and Arabs die, so on. Mm -hmm. I think one would point out to them, actually it hurts you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. America, yeah. Middle East policy is actually hurting America, besides hurting the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. I think the kind is kind of strange. People are talking about, you know, we shouldn't use using grocery bags, we should be so concerned about the environment and all. But the, the military, military, your expansion of the military is amazing. Yeah. You're bumping everyone else. Yeah. And you're talking about conserving you know, whether your trees are water, etc. I mean, it doesn't translate. I don't know why the military is not affected by this idea of global warming. <laughs> yeah, why people don't think maybe, well, you yeah. shouldn't be bombing yeah. so much or something like this. That's true. In fact, I think uh, studies have shown that if you look at individual institutions, the military is one of the biggest culprits when it comes to uh, the environmental yes. uh, challenge, yes, you know. Uh, but I think it's because it's a very powerful lobby. That's the reason. And it's linked to newspapers. It's linked, linked to radio stations, the media. You will find that some of the big corporations that own uh, the media or segments of the media, they are also the corporations that manufacture weapons mm -hmm. in, in the United States of America and in, in uh, Europe. So there is that uh, close link between uh, these interests, I think. You know, that's one of the reasons why these things are not mentioned. Just as no American uh, candidate for the presidency would want to talk about uh, Israel. Yeah. You notice that even when they go to California, Somehow this one issue they don't touch upon. The elephant in the living room <laughs> is there, but no one wants to recognize the elephant in the living room because you know they know it is very powerful. The lobby is very powerful.
Well, you go to the oil companies now. The sergeant they attack oil companies, but they're not attacking the military. Yeah. yeah. They don't come. So, yeah, they don't come. They don't come. Yeah. Uh, 